mean, you can see, you know, the lads are all together. Well, we worked hard tonight before for each other, and uh, I think we caught a great result against a very good team. I just wanted to get out and play and enjoy, and, and you know, might give them a chance. And you know, I'm just thrilled with that. And, and like I said, it's more about the team, and, and I'm thrilled for the team tonight. Lloyd Sam into the box, the early cross, free on the back side, it's popped home by Thierry on ring. Hi, I'm Nicola, this is my husband Richard and our daughter Willow and we are the UK's only zero waste shop where you can get over 200 organic products, all plant-based and all without the packaging. Richard and Nicola Eckersley from Zero Waste Shop in Totnes um, and I'm talking to them about various things from football to food to waste to happiness. So my first question I want to just find out a little bit about your story um, because you recently have moved to Totnes from living in New York, living in Toronto, living in Manchester and Richard you've gone from being a professional footballer with um, teams such as Man U and Burnley and uh, Toronto to running a little shop in Devon um, and many people might hear that story and imagine somehow that life now can be nowhere near as happy or successful or as prosperous as it was when you were living a high life but I know that you've got a slightly different story and I wondered if you'd mind just sharing a little. Yeah um, so you know we're all led to believe that um, having lots of fame and fortune I'm not saying I have lots of fame and fortune but had a taste of it and um, led to a lot of a lot more happiness. It almost doubled your happiness when in case I found out later on down the line when I started playing that it did, actually didn't. Um, the more like the higher up I got the more I realised that I was less and less happy. And I think um, it was that realisation after watching lots of documentaries and reading lots of books that um, it really brought it home to me actually. Is taught us from you, it's like you know, get your own house, get your car, you know, you'll be happy, you can buy what you want, do what you want. But I was living in this really nice house, um, I was rattling around with it, and I was kind of, I don't know, I was, I, I had nothing, I was a bit lost. Um, football wasn't going so well at the time either, so I really liked clinging on just to, you know, I, was, I was using my friends a lot and going out a lot and, and trying to look for um, ways to expel this inner, what's the word? In the tension in me, I think, mm -hmm. and I think, yeah, it was a big, it was a big wake up factor for me. Um, winning, I've been taught just to, if you win, then that's successful. You have to win, and it is that's basically the game in itself. Really. I'd say from an outsider though, um, there's also a big part where that takes a bit of a backseat at some point, and success is how long the contract is, how much you get, what car you're driving. So, well, it's a very uncertain world. You know, one minute you could be high flying with the manager, and the next minute you could be, you know, dumped on the head a little bit. Yeah. And almost, in a way, it sounds like your happiness or your success is defined by somebody else. Somebody else tells you yeah. if you're successful. Yeah. You're but happy. then that has a knock on effect that even the managers, their success is determined by the chairman, mm. and the chairman by the stakeholders, and blah, 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 blah. So it's just a massive knock on effect. Mm. And it's, it's a very. And then the fans, obviously, they determine. And then Jim Carrey, Tom Shadyac, um, Robin Williams. Yeah, they all 
they've kind of had what they craved. Mm. They were successful, obviously, like you know, they made millions. They made amazing movies that people know all over the world. But then something they kind of hit a block, and they think they think, well, well, what now? Like I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. I've ticked all the boxes that at school I got told that will make you happy, and they're actually not happy. They're sad, mm. and so. But it's a shame that it takes people to kind of experience wealth to know that. So it'd be great to try and get children, especially, to I don't know, make them come to the realization without them striving for money, getting it, and realizing that's not the answer. Initially, when I first started the company, when I was a professional and I was playing for Burnley and earning good money. Um, I'd fill my time with thinking about football, so I'd just think about football and, and like you said, to get away from that, I would, you know, go to the cinemas or go to the casino or do this and do that, but generally it was when you were a professional footballer, all I, would, I would never be able to switch off, even at night I would always be thinking about football, so I don't think I had a healthy relationship with it from the start, um, and I think it's the pressures from a young age to attain all this, you know, wealth and fame and fortune and prosperity, blah 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 blah, that made us and if you are fulfilled and you are happy, well, it's only very short lived until the next game. Mm. Until, you know, it's never, it's never like a okay. I'm feeling really like you know, I'm rich now, but um, it's a destination. It's like a carrot that you can't quite catch. Mm. And, and I think happiness is a process. And I think it is healthy to have you know lows as well as highs, um, as well as be, you know being in the middle. I think it's, it's, it's all a process.